We think that animal life is not valuable and we falsely believe that human life is valuable. But I can further explain how truly unvaluable human life is. If you would remove humans from the planet, the extinction of humans would benefit all the rest that exists. The air, the water, the mountains, the forests, the animals, everything. We are completely not special to this world. If you would remove ants, this is how special ants are, the whole ecosystem would collapse without ants. If the bees disappear, everything falls apart. This is how special and valuable bees are to the world. Where do we get off saying that we are valuable if all we do is just destroy and torment? Think that we are superior and dominate others. Welcome to Reconnect, the podcast dedicated to sharing and defending the good news of Jesus Christ. That is, Jesus died for sins, was buried, and on the third day was raised again according to the scriptures for our salvation. It is through Jesus alone that we are reconnected into a right relationship with God. Reconnect us, O oh Lord. All right, this episode we will be discussing the value of human life. This is an issue uh, that I've seen discussed quite recently in social media over an incident that occurred in Cincinnati recently. I was at a zoo. A kid, I've seen reports saying three years old as well as four years old. Most reports say four years old. Fell into a gorilla cage or encampment at the zoo. Uh, fell into some water, and the gorilla, one of the gorillas there, got the kid and started dragging him around like a rag doll. Apparently, <clears throat> people, you know, claim the gorilla was just helping the kid, but you know, apparently the kid did end up in the hospital afterwards with some serious injuries. The gorilla is four hundred pounds. The gorilla, the type, was at least a rare species, endangered species. In order to save the child, instead of using a tranquilizer dart, they just shot the gorilla and killed it. And this got a lot of uproar saying that the zoo did something wrong, that they did not value the life of the gorilla, that they should have done anything but shoot the gorilla to save the baby. The argument there was, well, a 400-pound gorilla could easily kill this little kid. Apparently, with one hand, they can crack open a coconut with one hand. Just break open a coconut. So this uh, kid's life was in extreme danger. And so to save the kid's life, they chose to shoot and kill the gorilla. That actually had a name, but I don't care enough to learn the gorilla's name. <laughs> Harambe? Or Hiram? I, I actually, Hiram Bob. I can't pronounce that name. I've never. It's not Bob or Dave. It I'm really starts bad. with an H. It starts with an H. Humbrumbra something. Nailed it. So I wasn't going <laughs> to attempt it, Ben, but thank you. No, it's okay. <laughs> I've never heard it pronounced. I was just, I just had seen it. Yeah, so I mean, people read. were really upset about this. And I think it's because they were saying they put the kid's life over the gorilla's life, which brings in a question is a gorilla's life worth more than the baby's life? So to start this off, I got Ben and Wes back with me. Uh, I was going to ask them some questions and see what they would do. If you had a choice, kill the gorilla. Or not kill the gorilla to save a child's life, which would you do? Would you kill will, the gorilla? I Even will, if it's an endangered species? I will kill a thousand gorillas to save one child's okay, life. Okay, so is this a competition <laughs> now? Or do you want to, because Wes just kind of just like opened the door for, yeah. uh, it's okay. Uh, if, if I had to kill the gorilla to save the child's life, the baby's life, I would kill the gorilla. Okay. And my follow up question was going to be, what if it was 10,000 yeah. gorillas? And Wes already said 1,000. So. Wes said 1,000. Would you kill 10,000, Wes, to save the life of this one child? Yeah, I mean, now we're just making bigger and bigger numbers to show yeah. that the child's life is just on a higher level of worth than the gorilla's life, period. In order to save the human child's life, I would wipe out every single species on. <laughs> On, Winner. On, on the face of this earth besides that child, uh, as long as it's not a human. Wow, man. However, you went, uh, uh, you went there. That's, 
That's that's more Every like single species. <laughs> no ramifications well, for that whatsoever. That that is <clears throat> showing like the ultimate uh, standard and value uh, that uh, human life has. And um, now that's not saying that oh let's do it. You know yeah, what I mean? So let's 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 actually wipe out everybody else. No, like you see, it's hyperbole another way. a little bit. We right? still hyperbole? we still value animal life, right? But it is not above um, human life. Right. So. Okay. So yeah, you, you went there. I was going to ask the next question. Would you <clears throat> wipe out an entire species? And would you do that? Entire species? Save yeah. the life of one baby? To save innocent life? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I just held a newborn innocent baby. Innocent life. Good qualifier. Yeah. So if the, so oh, if, so if the person shoot. did something wrong. Yeah, if a grown man goes and provokes a bunch of gorillas, I'm going to try to save the grown man. But at this point, the dude wants to die, clearly. I don't know. I'm so that to grizzly save the guy yeah. that lives with the grizzlies in Alaska <laughs> and then, like, was friends with them and called, them, called all the bears Bob and Dave, and he got killed. Like, if you saw that, you'd be like, okay, that guy deserves it. I'm not going to kill the bear it's not. It's not that he deserves it. That's it's. Well, is, is he innocent? I'm not. I'm not speaking theological innocence here. Okay. Before, before no, I, I, God, no one's righteous, not even one. Well, and I know I'm that. Totally on the plane of horizontal. In that case, the child was not innocent. Um, that fell in the gorilla cage. Oh, dang. The child was ignorant. I suppose would yeah. be the more accurate word. Yeah. In childlike ignorance, the kid was exploring and found himself right. in a very dangerous situation. Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. Which <laughs> could happen to. Any of us and our children, Ben, not yet having a child. Well, uh, I actually had the opportunity. I was speaking about this before that I held a newborn baby. It was my wife's uh, sister's first baby mm-hmm. uh, just this last weekend. And uh, she was less than 24 hours old. And it was just so incredibly amazing uh, to see, you know, human life even at that you know, very young age, mm-hmm. you know, coming into this, coming into this world, how uh, precious and valuable it is, you know, and it, uh, it definitely uh, made me appreciate the miracle of life, right? Um, you know that God has given us. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we're on the same page. You kill the gorilla. Now, a lot of people, I think, maybe are upset because they thought. Couldn't there have been another option, another route? Um, and I haven't read enough into it. But yeah, do we know enough to know that? I mean, what one? I understood they were afraid that if they did a tranquilizer dart, it would agitate the animal, who then would harm the child. And zoo workers would know that better than you and I would. Right. right? And someone else told me they heard it could take like twenty or thirty minutes for this four hundred pound gorilla to be sedated enough that they could then go in and get the child. Really? The tranquilizers don't yeah. work quicker than that? Apparently not. Uh, apparently it's not like you you're you hit them with the dart and they instantly go down. Otherwise, you they would have done that, right? I would think so. So whatever they, they were thinking, they were thinking this, if it hits, it's not going to be instantaneous. Which, which makes me think, too, man, these zoos, I didn't know, like, does every zoo have, like, a marksman on site that can do this sort of thing because I mean even then you're thinking like this 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 shot has to be perfect. Yeah, we've never thought through all this stuff, but I guess they have to. Yeah, I mean I don't know who um, I saw some people going online like some other specialists that are you know either specialist in running zoos or specialist in uh, gorilla behavior. They all were pretty much saying like we understand what the zoo di- zoo did, what they chose, and why they chose it, and we support them. But that's not what a lot of people were doing. Um, I, ben, do you have any of the examples in your that you saw where people were posting things like memes that were speaking out against this? Yeah, decision. Um, uh, if you just like, is Ben looking up information on Reddit about this? Is that no? I was just uh, <laughs> I was just doing some about tranquilizer on Reddit. No, I was just uh, doing some speed of putting a gorilla some, down. Yeah. Kind of thing. And I haven't done much, but it seems like it at least takes a few minutes. Hmm. So, well, even uh, if anesthesia. A few minutes would be enough to do some serious damage to a kid. And the kid didn't well, I mean, hospital, like, right? if you, uh, 
I haven't seen the video, but apparently Shoot. it's extremely graphic. The, the gorilla is literally just dragging this kid around like a rag doll. Yeah, that's terrifying. So if, if you're if you're the authority who's responsible for doing something about it, I get yeah shooting first and and, and I'll and I'll download audio <clears throat> of two nine one one calls. One that was the mother calling in, and another person that was there at the zoo that witnessed this child fall in. And um, I'll try to splice it in at this point. Hopefully, I can manage to do that. Cincinnati 911. Hi, my son's out in the zoo exhibit of the gorilla. There's a male gorilla standing over him. I need okay. someone to contact the okay. zoo, please. Okay. Just moments after her three year old boy fell into the gorilla enclosure, the terrified mother called for help. You do already have help started there, okay? How old okay. Is child? Isaiah, be calm. Be calm. Be calm. Be calm. He's dragging my son. I can't watch this. I can't. I can't watch. Others dialed 911 as they watched the 420 pound gorilla drag the boy throughout the exhibit. But he's dragging him from one end to the other. Oh my God. Zookeepers killed the endangered western lowland gorilla to save the boy's life. Child is safe. All right, sir. Yes. CBS also learned police are still reviewing the parents' actions that led up to the incident. Ultimately, the decision to pursue possible charges is up to the local prosecutor. Family has not been home since the incident, but because of the backlash, police have offered them extra patrols. And Scott, the family released a new statement today saying their son was seen by a second doctor and is doing okay. Jamie Ucas in Cincinnati. Jamie, thank you. That's a good amount of time. This is happening. It's you call 911, you're on the phone with 911. It's still happening. And yeah. then only later does the gorilla get shot and the child yeah. is. And when you hear the 911 call, not even from the mother, but from the other lady too, you really get an idea of like how uh, terrifying this was in person. Right. Uh, and my father in law, who first told me about this, um, he said he's, it was on the news and he just like wasn't even going to look at the screen. As soon as he saw the kid kind of being dragged, he's like, I'm not looking at that. Like, it was that kind of shocking to him. And I saw today the lady that actually did the filming of this said she hasn't posted all the film online because it was just too traumatic. Um, and the way she was talking, she said if they waited a couple minutes longer, she's certain the child wouldn't be here today. So when she said it was too traumatic to post all the video, I'm assuming it was of just the way the child was being handled. Yeah, we should believe it. Sounds yeah. Like, yeah. Anyways, uh, so a, a lot of people at home speculating on... You know, are saying this is not what should happen. Why would so many people be upset that the gorilla was killed to save the life of the child? Apparently, they're not on the same page as us. Yeah, uh, take, for example, this tweet by Katie Hopkins. I don't know who she is. Uh, but it says Harambe, or whatever his name is. Um, Har Harambe uh, was more valuable to the greater gene pool than the offspring of two feckless parents. Wow. Evolution's amazing. <laughs> Look at that worldview in action. Yeah. My goodness. Um, but it was interesting, too. Like, <clears throat> I mean, you see some memes about, like, oh, you know, if I ever want to get shot, let me just, you know. Um, I can't remember uh, the exact meme, but there's, you know, memes uh, making fun of the situation. It was interesting to see some people come out, though, and compare it to, like, the human uh, crime rate and deaths, like, you know, that happen. And kind of kind of asking, like, where is, uh, you know, where is their responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. being called. Uh, this was uh, one of the one of the tweets. It had a photo and this was the uh, the thing on the photo. Said child crawls into gorilla enclosure at Cincinnati Zoo. Petitioners who want uh, the parents held responsible, uh, 309,271 and counting. And then the next paragraph. Uh, same weekend, 19 juveniles arrested at Taste of Cincinnati for discharging firearms, fighting, resisting arrest, etc. Those calling for parents to be held responsible, zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's uh I'm not for sure which side they're on. I think yeah. they're on the side of uh why are we overreacting on this issue when there's yeah. all this other Again, it shows the devaluing of human life. If people are going to make this uh such a big story, why not the ones you just mentioned where 
there seems to be a lot more violence that's occurred to humanity. Yeah. And, and again, that's, you know, humans killing other humans kind of thing where the juveniles, uh, were arrested for, you know, for their, for their crimes. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, it's, uh, you know, it's, a uh, by shooting the gorilla, you're saying that the human child is, uh, worth more. Right. And if you sit down and talk with a lot of people, uh, that don't think so, uh, you know, they're probably the first ones to say that, you know, the human race is like, you know, a plague to this planet and we've done, you know, so much harm to it and it would be better off like without us kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, we've, we have done a lot of harm to the environment, but I like to think of it as we also have the potential to do a lot of good. You know, it's just the, it's not necessarily that, um, like the human race is bad. It's the decisions that we've made. Right. Right. But all of us are bad according to scripture. Yeah. So that was the one question I had. And why would so many people be upset? And I was curious more like, what is the worldview of the people that are raising all these objections? Why did they kill this gorilla? They shouldn't have killed this gorilla. Uh, the one you, the one that you just read was from more of an atheistic viewpoint, I imagine, har- uh, harping on like evolution. And I heard you say atheism. West, do you think this is coming from evolution. atheist evolution? Do you think this is coming from a, an atheistic worldview or some sort of evolutionary worldview, or do you think it's a different worldview that's that's prompting this? Well, I have both. my thought, but it's I'm both. curious what you guys think. Yeah, it's evolution. I think it's got to be evolutionary. I'm not quick enough on my feet to analyze yeah. whether or not it must be atheistic uh-huh. as far as just the compatibility of the statement with that view. I think that tweet you read is is worth considering for a second. The idea was that the gorilla makes a greater contribution to, to the gene global pool? gene pool than that of two feckless what was it parents, parents. of feckless parents. Well, so I mean the, the offspring of two feckless the parents. offspring yeah. of feckless parents. Okay, feckless mean that's lack of courage, right? Do I have that right? Yeah, I think that's what that means. Um, or I'm wrong, <laughs> but. What that does is it locates the value of human life in the contribution we could potentially make to gene pool. And that, that's worth thinking about for a second. Is, is, that, is that where the human life's value is? Because we can probably think of all kinds of people that we value that we, you know, what contribution do they make to the gene pool? Um, that's right. If it was, if it happened to be... Uh, if I value someone who's sterile, who can't have children... No Should value. I not because they don't, you know? Or someone who more than likely will have children that have some sort of mental handicap yeah. or physical handicap based on, you know. Should I value the DNA unintelligent, the, yeah. the genetically handicapped, yeah, whatever you want to call it. And that, and I think that's, um, that's a dangerous place to locate the value of human life. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it, it makes it very easy to take human life that isn't valuable yeah. on that uh, on that presupposition do you do you think though because my initial reaction was maybe thinking it's evolution because that's a lot of the arguments that they're making but i think they're actually borrowing from a different worldview okay which one um a new age worldview something that's hindu related something that's Taoist related something that is some sort of monism. new age some sort of monism which is different than like naturalism or the atheism where everything is material to a form where everything is sacred because everything comes from the same divine wellspring in the sense that we're all actually consisting of the same essence, which is divine of of some sort. And so because of that, you're not supposed to kill the gorilla or the baby. You're supposed to figure out how to save both. And you make that attempt, kind of the way Christians will say in response to abortion, well, what about for the life of the mother? You would really have the mom die? No, and not have the abortion. Both. You go, no, the doc, yeah, the doctor's job is to save both. So I feel like these people are coming from that view, although they're, they're giving it, they're giving more like evolution type answers. But if you're really consistent with evolution, you wouldn't be complaining about this because the gorilla was weak. Ah, uh, he should I die. Mean, I haven't right? done background. How, what was it like for, uh, amount of species left for this gorilla? Who like, cares? Was it, 
If they are no. low, then we need to get rid of them because clearly they've been weeded down for no purpose. In <laughs> no, the true evolutionary form, why do you even save endangered animals? Uh, because they They're contribute weak to the – well, uh, endangered animals uh, can be – or can come about you know, through the actions of humans, right? But like, we're the we best. Can, we can um, – isn't it survival of the fittest? And I mean, if yeah, according they to haven't the, adapted ac- well enough. According to their environment, but uh, humans, I would say, have more control over like moving, you know, to environments. And so, like, just because uh, they're near extinction doesn't mean necessarily that they are not fit for their environment. It could mean that, like, we've changed their well. It. What I'm trying to say is that humans uh, can be responsible for the extinction of certain species. And right. so from an evolutionary standpoint, uh, the the value of biodiversity is uh, is very high oh. uh, because the more species there are, mm-hmm. like for a particular animal or organism, uh, the better off they are for huh. uh, withstanding, yeah. you know, like – uh, diseases that come through, like or predators, and which so, still set survival as the end goal. So, but what interesting what you just described to be able to have it. So basically, we as humans being at the top of this evolutionary chain, thinking from the worldview, we then uh, to make sure our own survival happens, we need to make sure we're taking care of all the other species. Which makes me question how for for them how how in the world would they explain mankind getting so far ahead that we're the only species that can really take care of and maintain and preserve the life of any other species they would say they would say it like it just so happened like <laughs> just, accor- according to our environment mm-hmm. you know that we are in that we were the organisms uh that adapted in this way because Interesting. uh what they'll say is the goal of evolution is not to create a perfect organism Right, it's just uh, that whatever is best suited for that environment uh, will survive and thus reproduce. Interesting. So, yeah, I don't. That's why, like, I I wouldn't say that evolutionists consider uh, humans like at the top um, necessarily. We're not the most evolved. Um, well, maybe as far as our cognitive abilities. Mm. Oh, yeah, because in terms of strength, we're certainly not. The gorilla is definitely stronger than us. Yeah, exactly, right? Okay. Um, And so apparently our our cognitive abilities, uh, we've – they've been – our our brains have developed, they've said, in our environment uh, so that they help us to survive, right? They – like they come up with reasons for, you know – like why we have emotions, you know, it's because it helps us survive. Like why we have, yeah. uh, you know, laws, it's, you know, to help us survive and stuff like that. And Interesting. So, so it's, likely it's an atheistic worldview or what I'm thinking maybe some more of a new age sort yeah, of worldview I would that's say prompting it's this. it's probably those two main so, ones. So is this something scripture goes against? Does scripture support that the life of humans um, is on the same level as that of animals? No. Does scripture support that? No. no. So how how does scripture answer then uh for why human life is more valuable than that of the animals? Well, after the flood, God tells Noah, just as I have given you every green plant of the field to eat, so now I give you every living creature. So it is not that animals are not valuable, right? Man was placed mm. with stewardship to work and care for the garden, to even name the animals. That's how much we care for them. But in a sinful world, God has given us this world for our sustenance, now including animals. Mm. So it's not that animals aren't valuable. It's that human beings are the most valuable in God's creation. Okay. That's his determination, not ours. Yeah, so we are more valuable than the animals. Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, then I like how you and were clarifying. And that's not an arrogant it statement. Mean... That's a reliance on the structure and ordering God reveals to us mm-hmm. in his word. And I was thinking on this to help support this, we're created in the image of God. Yes. And nothing else. Not even angels. Nothing, nothing else, else in Scripture yeah. ever has that qualifier. Right. Um, and that, that comes from Genesis 127, right, at the start of the Bible. Yeah. And uh, another verse or set of verses uh, that uh, say that animals are not made in God's image and they lack you know, that spiritual understanding oh, uh, from 
uh, from Psalm 32, mm-hmm. 8 through 9. Uh, this is uh, NIV. Um, and it says, I will, t- I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Mm. So in Psalm, we, we see that, you know, in God's word, that animals do not have the same understanding. And what you were quoting from Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 27, that, that passage there, uh, it's only humans that have that understanding and that are made in the image of God. Mm-hmm. So animals do have value, but they don't have the, the same value as humans. Humans are more valuable. So how is this helpful maybe in the discussion? What, uh, how should we be responding when this sort of discussion really kickstarts? And Wes, you're not really on social media much, right? Not a bit. Um, so was this even anything on your radar throughout yeah, the week? Yeah, my wife brought it up to me. She said, hey, did you hear about that zoo and what happened with that lady? And now the lady's getting all kind of flack. Oh, yeah. yeah Parents so shaming. She, she, yeah, she told me about it. Yeah. Okay, so it, it, it still came to you via that. It's, yeah. it's interesting where like events like this happen. Next thing you know, your social media feed is just full of all sorts of <laughs> images and quotes and articles and uh, just just on that one event. And I feel like this is something that when op- when things like this arise, if we can be prepared for it, we can Yeah, I mean insert like wisdom from God into the situation to help bring people back to a right understanding of God's design and order. And I think that is something that we really need to step into. And I think something we can say, I was just looking at a little poster that Ben had on his screen about how it's upsetting that we'll mourn the death of gorillas and, you know, neglect Memorial Day, neglect, you know, innocent Mm -hmm. babies dying in the womb because of abortion, um, neglect our neighbors who are dying in their sin, but we're upset about um, a gorilla. I think that's the idea behind the poster. Mm. Um, I think one thing we can do, and it, and it, and it might be a little disarming to those who mm-hmm. would disagree with us who are so upset that the gorilla died, is we can say, you know what, we're upset the gorilla died too. Yeah. Because that's true. Did the gorilla have to die? Could things have gone differently? Yeah. I don't know how. But it is upsetting that, you know, be, because of carelessness, um, a gorilla was shot. Mm-hmm. Then we can at the same time say, but we fully agree with the decision to shoot the gorilla yeah. as an effort to spare the kid's life. Good. It is a tragedy that the gorilla died. It would have been more tragic had the baby died. And that's why the necessary precautions were yeah. taken. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know how disarming that would be, but it's not that like we don't, really good. Va- I don't, it's not that we don't value human life. Mm-hmm. You know, when someone's pet dies, we can mourn over that. Right. That's correct. Or um, we, you said human life. You mean, uh, animal life, right? Yeah, it's not that yeah. we don't value animal life. I messed that up completely. No worries. So, you know, when someone's pet dies, goldfish dies, their dog of 10 years or whatever dies, mm-hmm. and they're very upset about it, we don't go, oh, get over it. It's not a human. It's just an animal. Yeah. Right? That's heartless. We we understand um, that animals are valuable, that we can form relationships with animals, mm-hmm. but at the same time, um, it is a greater thing to lose a, a, an actual family member, a yeah. human being. Um, so I... Th- I think we need to we need to preach that too, possibly to the person who's on the other side of the fence from us. Yeah, I like how you started with that by recognizing what the objection that they're raising over the loss of life, even animal life. And like admit that that's not the good. wages of sin is death, including animal good. death. Yeah, it's not good that animals die. It's a fallen, messy world. Mm-hmm. We should probably look into the situation a little bit more and make sure uh, children can't fall into such pits again because I, I know i was at our local zoo in santa Ana, and they it's like known for monkeys i don't think they have any they don't have any gorillas they have small monkeys uh but they have some decent sized monkeys there i don't know the names of all of them or the names of all the species present there but I, one of them it was like a deck overlooking a moat and the uh, i it was not like the rails were very high i was able to literally like holding my daughter have her over the rail, just holding her at like chest level. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was sitting there going like, man, like what if she just wigged out right now? Like, I think I got a hold of her. Yeah. You're, you're seeing how easy it would be for a parent to be 
just not careful yeah. enough for something like this to happen. And if I remember correctly, this zoo that we were at in Santa Ana, I think the um, I think the rails were like wooden. It was it was like wooden railing on a wooden deck, and I think there was spacing on the vertical bars. Yep. So it's like. I don't think the spacing is enough for a kid. Don't they to have slip nets through. in front of the displays too? Like there's a rail separating you from yeah. the net separating you. There from the... certainly is not at the exhibit I was thinking of. Oh, interesting. Now okay. this is the one I'm thinking of at Santa Ana. Now you would think now that that one it wasn't 400 pound gorillas. It was some big apes. I don't know the type of apes, but they were pretty big. Sure. But I don't think they weighed more than any of us do. Um, but still, it's like wow, it still could be pretty bad. So I could see how something like this could easily happen. Um, if your head's turned for just a second, even, yep. which could happen to any of us. Um, so I think maybe just admit, like, yeah, there were something went wrong here. Um, yeah. introduce me to the parent who hasn't lost track of their child for at least 15 seconds. You know, yeah. I, I, it's, it's just something that happens. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to have some parent like email you now. That's me. I've never. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I was talking to one of our te- one of our colleagues here and she said that her son once was, uh, she, Literally turned her head for like, you know, she didn't see her son for five, ten seconds and he was right by her. And the next thing she knows, everyone's running over to some fountain. Oh my god. And she and she looks, she's like, My son's not beside me. Yeah, he's the kid. kid in the fountain. Yeah. You know? So it's and so it's just like this this stuff happens, you know, and it, it can let us know too, I think, a reminder of how fragile life is. Yep. Um, and help us really consider like who our loved ones are, who the people are in our life. I like how you even said even our neighbors. I don't know nowadays maybe we aren't as close to our neighbors as we should be and called to be. Well, we build fences. <laughs> yeah. Wall. <laughs> Wall. Yeah. And uh, who's going to pay for it? <laughs> our neighbors. <laughs> but I would hope my neighbors are not breaking into my house. True. Hence, we build a wall. All right, before we derail too far. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so – Let's speak on the image of God a little bit. I don't. How do we define what the image of God is? What is it that we've been given that makes us more valuable than the humans? I don't. I don't know that we're quick to define it because Scripture doesn't. I think what Ben did earlier, letting Scripture interpret Scripture by saying, "Hey, Genesis tells me that male and female He created them in the image of God He created them," and then looking at the Psalms where it makes a distinction between beasts of the field, mm-hmm. like the horse. And then humankind's, that's letting scripture interpret scripture to say, okay, God doesn't define what his image is mm-hmm. that we're created in, but these other passages make a distinction between man and animal regarding understanding. Mm-hmm. And that's not an inappropriate distinction to make. So we can possibly loosely read that into maybe that's related to what it means that we're in the image of God and animals are not. Um, but I, I would be slow to say, this is what it is. We've got right. it figured out because scripture doesn't explicitly Very do so silent. for us. Yeah. Very silent. Um, a book that Wes still teaches the class, so he's still using it. It's called To Believe. Uh, there are multiple authors with it, but the editor on it, whose name is on the book, is Stephen Mueller. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a professor that Wes and I both had at Concordia Irvine. Uh, sadly, Fisher is not a Concordia Irvine alum. It's okay. I read his book for my doctrinal classes at nice. Concordia University. Yeah. Awesome. Called to Believe, Teach, and Confess. Yes. That is the um, larger version. The one we use at, at the high school level here is an abridged version. Okay. Which is basically the same text. They just removed um, some of the lengthier, yeah. more detailed sections of some of the chapters, and they removed a couple chapters. But He preaches here at uh, St. Paul's. You go to his church, don't you? Yeah, Yeah. him and Pastor Espinoza. Yeah. Both. Like, they take turns. It's like... So you actually got his truck now. You actually have him (laughs) as a pastor. Yeah, it's okay, though. Okay. So anyways, coming from this book, uh, something I really liked on it was what Wes just said. It's not clearly defined in Scripture. Uh, To figure out what the image of God is, I like the approach they took in that book. They said, let's see what... Scripture says about man before the fall and then after the fall uh, and seeing what's different there. And the reason I think they do that is because Genesis 5, 2, and again, I'm getting these verses uh, from things that were compiled in that book, uh, talks about the loss of God's image. Because when Adam bore a son in Genesis 5, 2, it says he bore a son in his own likeness after his image. So instead of bearing a child in the image of God, Adam bore it in his own likeness, which is some sort of indicator then that somehow the image of God was tainted or the lost. image the image that we 
inherit is not directly from God. It's through our forefathers, mm-hmm. ultimately through Adam. And because of sin, it's a tainted one. Mm-hmm. And then going with this too, other verses they list are 1 Corinthians 15.49, Ephesians 4.24, and Colossians 3.10. All of these, Paul is speaking about a restoration of the image of God. Uh, so somehow that's, uh, that yeah. the image has been lost, but now it's being restored in Christ. And this is a lifelong process as we walk through life. Yeah, Jesus is described as the express image of God. And that's what we are being re-imaged mm-hmm. after, Christ who is God. But then scripture also indicates that we retain the image of God. Uh, Genesis 9, 6 and James 3, 9. Uh, Genesis 9, 6, the reason why we should not kill another human being is because we were created in his image. And James 3, 9 says not just even kill, we should not curse other men, uh, which is certainly something I think we all do, which the way Jesus defines murder would be would fit in line with it. Mm-hmm. We, are, we are killing our brother, killing our neighbor. Um, I probably was doing that before this podcast even started, talking trash on someone. <laughs> uh, so James 3, 9 uh s- supports this as well by saying don't don't curse a man because we're made in the image of God. So all this would indicate that we somehow retain God's image. So the question would be, uh, what did we lose? What did we gain? Wes, do you have anything to riff on that from class? Sure. I mean, I think I think what we kept is some of those things um, just on the hizor- horizontal level compared to other creatures. We retain intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, we retain a concept of morality, good and evil, yet it is one where we uh, we don't follow our own moral conscience, mm-hmm. right? We do evil, and that's that's why the flood, and that's why Christ had to die, um, or, or at least did on our behalf, because God's justice against my sin. I know good from evil, but I don't do the good. Right. I do the evil. Um, and um, I think in regards to how we lost the image, um, it would be... Um, just that, the very fact that we've lost that, um, that perfect innocence, that perfect morality uh-huh. that Adam and Eve had pre-fall. Um, we've lost our immortality. God mm-hmm. designed us not to die. The wage of yeah. sin is death. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, we've lost, um, that right standing with God. My mm-hmm. righteousness isn't righteousness at all, right? It, it used to be that, you know, if you want, if, if a creature wanted to see what God was like, they could just look at Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. That's that, that God's like that. Mm-hmm. But now, as creatures look to us, you know, you own your cat or your dog, and that's the closest thing they've ever seen to God. Um, it it's it is so tainted by sin. Not like Adam and Eve were pre-fall, and that's the image that God is restoring to mm-hmm. us to, for those who believe in Christ. Yeah, it's really good. So I I like to think of it. Um, before God and before the world. Um, before God, I've lost my right standing with him. Mm-hmm. I've lost the immortality he designed me li- with. I've lost the morality of choosing good that he designed mm-hmm. me with. Before the world, um, I, I still can be good. I still am intelligent. I still can be steward. Mm-hmm. Um, God made me, God made us head over creation to care mm-hmm. for the animals and we should care for gorillas. Yeah. Um, but we don't do it perfectly like we ought or like Adam and Eve did. Yeah. Very good. Uh, so I think what Wes just shared definitely helps us be able to be able to respond to why we are in a more valuable position in the world. And that God's position, to us. yeah, and, and that position with, of value is one of responsibility. That's what I was about yeah, to say, because yeah. it comes with the stewardship of God's mm-hmm. creation. Uh, some translations say we were given dominion over creation. Uh, but that word should much be better looked at as stewardship, which is why we do take care of these endangered animals. Um, yeah, that would God, be our God puts, to that. God puts things that are in charge, things that are head, they have headship. He puts them there that they might serve mm-hmm. those underneath them, not that they might enjoy their totem pole mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. <clears throat> uh, and then response to like the atheistic worldview, I think that's a really good way of explaining why we have more value as well because it's been given to us i think it also helps explain why we are light years ahead of everything else in creation all other species in terms of our intellectual capabilities our moral capabilities our relational capabilities um it's the evolutionary worldview has no explanation for how we leapt forward so much in those regards they have one i i would agree that it's not it's not very reasonable 
That's not a reasonable explanation. I, I think I heard Ben say it earlier, by chance. For uh, evolving certain... <laughs> yeah, why why we're light years ahead of everything else in the world. Well, in terms uh, of it's, all the stuff it's we not discussed. completely by chance. Um, it's um, the mutations happen by chance. So it's like random mutations. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, those that are kept are kept on purpose, so to speak, uh, because they are the ones that uh, help uh, that organism survive and reproduce mm-hmm. in their specific environment. Yeah. So that's their argument is that uh, evolution is not just a random blind process, but rather it's it's – you know, selective in uh, the random mutations that happen. Uh, uh, Only some will be kept and some will not be based upon how well they help you to survive. But as far as, you know, like things like morality, you know, um, uh, laws of logic. Surviving is moral, right? uh, I mean, that's how they have to see it, right? Surviving is moral. Yeah, it's... uh, It's where they've moved. They they do not have uh, any foundation for that because... Mm -hmm. Uh, if they say, oh, you know, logic is just, you know, a human construct, uh, you know, made in, you know, made from our minds. Well, uh, there's no humans on Mars yet, right? Or on the other side of the universe. But, uh, don't those same laws of logic apply there too? Mm-hmm. Right? And so, uh, immaterial things like that, you know, uh, laws of morality, uh, in the way that we, you know, as a society accept them, cannot be explained through evolution. Yeah, real quickly, before we get too far on this, if you want a fantastic, credible source on why the evolutionary or naturalistic worldview does not successfully explain um, kind of human intelligence, Alvin Plantinga, Naturalism Defeated. It's not easy reading, but if you can read that level of reading... Um, that guy just nails why naturalism is actually incompatible with um with kind of intelligence essentially mm-hmm. with intelligence it's really good but is he christian yes he is he's uh is he a theistic evolutionist i don't know what he does try to argue is that evolution is more compatible with theism and not even compatible with atheism He's not trying to say that theists should be evolutionists. He's trying to say that atheists can't be naturalists, can't be evolutionists, which is ironic because most of them are. And he does it purely from the argument of just logic. It's really good. I think I've I've read that. Yeah, planting a naturalism defeated. All right, so let's connect this to the theme of this podcast, Reconnect, which is sharing and defending the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, Human value and its worth. How does this connect to sharing the gospel? I feel like this is a perfect starting point to it. How do we know we have immense great value as humans to God? Christ. Christ. Yeah, God demonstrates his love in Christ's primarily his death and resurrection for us. I mean, Christ's whole life, but Mm -hmm. that's at the center of it all. Yeah. But if we thought, you know, that limited atonement was... (laughs) Was uh, was true, you yep. know, and that yep. Christ didn't make everybody savable. Then what about those that uh, are predestined to be damned? Do they not have as much value as the elect, their lives? Well, a topic deserving they, its own not, podcast, yeah, but that's why limited atonement destroys the gospel. Even though I used to believe it, I'm, I'm willing to say that now. Limited yeah. atonement destroys the gospel. I would agree with that. It destroys the gospel. You can't even proclaim the gospel, in my opinion. I love my Reformed brothers. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we strongly disagree on this one. Yeah. Because <clears throat> for me, I, and I, Ben and I did one on total depravity a while back. Oh, I good. still want to get to the U, the L, the I, and the P, and I want to get some Calvinist in here, in particular good. some Calvinist yeah. pastors, before I move into that. And I've just been too slow inviting <laughs> those Calvinist pastors in here. Uh, to be able to have that conversation. Uh, but what you just asked is, I think, a really great, great question to say for that episode. But I know for myself, and I would like to ask him this too, when it comes to proclaiming the gospel, I don't think I can say to a stranger as a Calvinist, Christ died for you. Christ loves you. 
He's shown this by laying his life down for you. I, I, I can't make it a personal You have to say Christ has died for the world. You can't say you. And you, even yeah. then... And even the world redefine, is qualified. I have to redefine world for yeah. the person. Because any any average person on the street, when I say Christ died for the world, what are they going to think? Everybody. Everybody, including the animals, the plants, everything. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, I Which think, we know he did because he is going to restore all things in a way, even though he died particularly to redeem us. We know he's coming to make all things new. And creation is actually crying and waiting for his return so that they may be set free as well. So even though he died particularly for our atonement and our sin, uh, the rest of creation is also set free from the bondage to sin and decay that they've been put under through Adam and Eve's actions and and ours. But if I cut off a blade of grass, that blade of grass is not going to end up in heaven, right? It's, or, you know, like the gorilla that was just killed. Animals, Animals that are killed here don't end up in heaven. Rather... Uh, God's creation, right? The things that he has here on earth, uh, they will be present there, uh, but not like the same one. Otherwise, it would be. Do you think that's a gospel for animals? Is that scripture or speculation? Do you know? Like, can you think of scripture that That says says, this animal will not be saved? Will not have a won't have a new body or new life or anything like that. Well, Christ died to save us, mm-hmm. right? All creation is sinful, right? That is made. Yeah. Okay, so that would mean that... Uh, all creation is affected by sin. Right? Yes, yeah, humans all, are all creation culpable is, for sin. Uh, and wait, the, so, and, and the devil so and the animals, too. although they are sinful, they're not uh, held accountable for sin? Like they don't have a... Uh, I don't think animals are morally accountable for their actions. Okay. That's speculation. But I can't think of a scripture that would lean me towards that they are. I can. I was just thinking the whole image of God uh, discussion that we just had now, like yeah. because we are made in the image of God, and like Christ when, came to save us. We're morally responsible beings. I'm That's morally right. responsible yeah. for my sin, but when I tell my dog "bad dog," there's not some ultimate just. And I don't own a dog, and I wouldn't tell my dog "bad dog" if I did. I would tell but my the, dog "bad dog." Okay, Andy would. Yeah. But the the whole point is there's not an ultimate judge that's going to one day make the dog be accountable for his deeds. But there is a judge who made creatures in his image, you and me, mankind, who will hold us accountable for our actions. So um, that's that's not a strong argument from Scripture, which is why Andy brought up speculation. There's some silence here. It addresses yeah. me, humanity. It does not address animals. Yeah. Uh, clearly, animals um, but are affected by to, sin because to now me, we're eating them. So let me interject um, on yeah, this go one. Ahead. Uh, going back to what I was saying where... I can't say Christ died for specifically for every single thing in this world because yeah. it seems like he certainly took on human flesh and died to save humanity. That's right. But uh, Romans eight nineteen says, For creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God for us at Christ's return. Verse 20, For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Verse 21, that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. So I want to know, like, I is that not speaking about the animals? It says creation. It says creation. Animals and everything. then some, yeah. Just... And then Revelation, Jesus says, when I come back, I'm making all things yeah. new. And there's a lot of scripture verses that speak of predatory animals, what we know to be predatory animals, lying down with what would be their prey in this yeah, world. Yeah, so, I'm not saying there's not going to be animals in heaven. I'm just saying that th- I don't think there's I can't really say any. I don't. Well, I can't say it's not the exact same animals that lived here. We're pretty far off track, though, right? Aren't we? I think we are. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I mean. But it's it may like, be not because it means these animals are still valuable to God. Okay. okay. Right. And we're talking about the gospel here, and who did Christ die for? Um, and that that is that does show our value as, as humanity to try to tie it back in. Okay. So yeah, I mean, how do we use how do we use a current event like this one that blew up social media to help us reconnect um, to you know God's love for us in Christ? I think it starts with um, um, acknowledging the value of life. Mm-hmm. Preaching the truth and proper distinction between human life versus animal life. Yep. Um, just because we value all life does not mean we value all life equally. God God has not ordered it that way. 
So we value the uh, we value the human being mm-hmm. more than any other creature in creation because God has ordered it that yes. way. Um, and like you said, maybe there is a connection, and I was too quick to say we're off on a rabbit trail. Um, Christ, um, though he died for sinners like me, humans, um, he is going to make all things new. He's redeeming all of creation as it waits for um, for that day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's uh, that. I think is what our you know I guess ideological opponents, those who would say that, that was so wrong that they shot the gorilla. Um, maybe the, these are some of the truths that we can try to, in love, share with them. Yeah. It's because so we're not worried about, at this point, you know, oh, was Harambe the gorilla saved you yeah. know, before they shot him kind of thing. And if you're not Christian, if you, let's say you are an atheist, well, well, Harambe doesn't even know he's dead. Exactly. And the, and so, and the baby wouldn't know he's dead either. So really they have just stripped. I don't think we would worry about that, though, even if Harambe weren't a gorilla, but if, if it were a human being. If we yeah. saw some strange human being grab a child and run yeah, yeah, off, true. and the way to save this child's life was to shoot that human being, true, yeah. uh, at least to incapacitate him, we wouldn't worry, is this guy saved or not before I make this decision? We would save the kid. Well, the um, pacifist would. Well, maybe, the pacifist Christian. Okay, I've, I've shown my hand. I'm not a pacifist. <laughs> I've revealed yes. my cards. I would not question yeah. harming the human individual who is hurting a child yeah neither would i i would shoot him too although (laughs) although bringing that up here's one of the memes i saw uh it's the little joker meme from the dark knight i don't know the exact phrasing ben correct me if i'm wrong it's like some something about nobody bats an eye and then everybody loses their mind right so it goes no no i thought oh yeah isn't the bat their eye at the end no first the first yeah Million babies a year aborted Aborted. in America. No one bats an eye. No one bats an eye. Shoot one gorilla (laughs) to save a toddler. Everyone Everyone loses loses their their minds. minds. Yeah. And again, I think this is just showing the inconsistency of all these worldviews. Personally, Ben, I think they're being inconsistent as atheists or as evolutionists. Survival of the fittest, who cares, right? And if they do want to play some card of you shouldn't do this, I would tell them, make me, right? Let's be evolutionists. Make me stop. Yeah. Right? They're being inconsistent or they're being new age, in which case they're still being inconsistent because most of these new agers support abortion. So it's like all life is sacred and this and that, but because they've got this warped mentality that they themselves are divine and sacred, they think they have authority over things like the unborn. Yeah. Because for whatever reason, they got that power because, you know, they're God in their own head. So it's like everything's inconsistent, which I guess would be the precept sort of apologetics that we've discussed a little bit, just showing inconsistencies in people's actions. So who's actually consistent with that monist worldview? Like the Jainist? Like like who's actually consistent? The Jainist is probably most consistent. Okay. Uh, from my understanding. Okay. In, in terms of like not harming things. Um, but it, it, I don't know, obviously it's more f- when it comes to America, I think, with the way we handle that sort of like Hindu philosophy and stuff. But anyways, guys, let me, let me maybe close with this. Tell me if you like this. Story I heard recently, my pastor gave this image or example. Someone holds up a $100 bill. They ask a crowd, hey, who wants this $100 bill? Lots of people raise their hands. He then throws the $100 bill on the ground, stomps on it, you know, makes it dirty. Who wants it? Yeah, people still want it. You know, I'm going to wrinkle it up, crumple it up on a ball, spit on it. Who still wants it? Everyone's still raising their hand, right? Because has the value of the dollar bill changed even though it has been damaged or at least dirtied, right? And the answer would be no. Um, and so that's, I think, a good image then for us that he was presenting with us and God. Um, we are created in his image. And even though we're fallen and even though we're, we, we've really blown it big, uh, we're simple, dirty people, we still have not lost the value of being created in the image of God. And he still loves us just the way we currently are now. Um, and he gave everything through Christ to, to save us. Um, I yeah, sort of thought that was a cool image so, to talk about our value to help maybe. Yeah, this may be too loose, but, you know, in, in the same way that Scripture says, you know, Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith, that maybe we we could rightfully proclaim that God is the author and perfecter of the life that he has made in his image. I, I mm-hmm. mean, he, yeah. Yeah, certainly the perfecter right now, right? Definitely. All right, any uh, 
closing words or thoughts? No, that was good. I, th- I, I think I like that illustration. It's good. Yeah. I just, you know, I, all these questions like came up in my mind that would like set us off on another round. You know, <laughs> like, what if it was a, you know, uh, a saved dollar bill versus an unsaved dollar bill. Does it still have the same value? Or if uh, <clears throat> that person's saved, I can only save one person right now. This person's a Christian. That person's not. I save the non-Christian every time. Would you? <laughs> Is that what? I don't know. <laughs> I save my brother in Christ every time. Now am I hateful? Now am I bigot? Now am I? Yeah, that's a good question. I think Bear. it's one of those one of those questions in like what we've been you know, dealing with this whole time is that, like, uh, we wouldn't ever want anyone to die, mm-hmm. you know, but ultimately what we've gained from this discussion is that uh, that without Christ, you know, we we are destined for hell because of what we've done, but because of what he's done for us, like, we can, we can take all human life and find it, you know, as valuable and uh, know that Christ died for everyone. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, that's the best news. Amen. So if you want to send hate mail, <laughs> uh, you can send it to Andy at contradictmovement.org. Just in case, you know, I posted this on a PETA site or something and you happen to click on it. Andy at contradictmovement.org. I, I do like to respond to emails because, you know, I don't get too many of them there. <laughs> that tells you the audience that usually downloads this each week. Uh, but periodically there's uh, some objections that was raised. Uh, so anyways, my uh, closing is what I normally like to close with, and that it is through Jesus Christ, through his life, his death for our sins, his burial, and his resurrection for our salvation, that we can have everlasting life and a reconnected relationship with God and, you know, Wes brought it up once that maybe some people would be opposed to the reconnect idea. So maybe that's a future podcast as well. God bless you all. (laughs) The following is an excerpt from the Gospel Coalition's review of Andy Rasman's book, Contradict, They Can't All Be True. Quote, Contradict will help a lot of conversations get started. Rasman provides Christian believers with a great starting point for understanding and evaluating many of the world's religions. He should be commended for writing a substantive apologetic book that's also practical on so many levels. The strongest sections are where he offers a concise guide on interacting with skeptics and other religious adherents. Many readers will find Rasman's section on the 20 facts on the five major world religions and 20 questions that are most commonly asked when sharing the contradict message invaluable. This is a solid book, apologetically, theologically, and practically. I pray it will open the eyes of many believers to the importance of evangelizing in a pluralistic age, unquote. To financially support Reconnect, visit ContradictMovement.org and order your copy of Contradict, They Can't All Be True. Contradict stickers and tracks are also available. Again, that's ContradictMovement.org. episode on all of your social media sites and with your email contacts people who will benefit from listening to the show thank you for listening reconnect us oh lord